Hi friends! Welcome! My name is Baron, and this is my channel where I talk about some book stuff. I'm the book Baron. <laughs> Welcome in! Once again, Seattle is stormy and gross, but also intermittently sunshiny, so you're gonna get some weird ass lighting today. It's literally sun showering right now, which is just bizarre, but here we are. Today I wanted to talk about some paranormal romance series you can get into for a spooky time of year. Paranormal romances used to be my absolute all-time favorite. It was the genre I sought out the absolute most, and I still have a big soft spot in my heart for this subgenre. But without further ado, let's get into the different series. I'm just going to intro for each of them the first book in the series and let you know a little bit about what it's about. First up, I have written by Catherine Moon. This is the first in a four book series. It is a witchy polyamorous why choose and it's got a little bit of a magical school setting. So Joanna is regular human. She has just a touch of magic, just enough to be able to work at this very magical university and in particular work in their library. This is where she attracts the attention of three very handsome professors who are looking to complete their coven. But there's just one problem. Joanna, she's not magical. She can't be part of a coven. While well, all this is going on and they're getting all their feelings sorted out, there's some mysterious stuff happening. There's a little bit of darkness that's lurking around, a little bit of a mystery that's afoot. I will say I liked the romance. I loved the plot of this. That's really what hooked me in this series. And so if you're looking for something that's got a heavy emphasis on romance but still has a decent like mystery element to it, this is perfect. Next up is a recent read. It's How to Bite Your Neighbor and Win a Wager by D.N. Brin. So there's only two books in this series so far. I believe it's still ongoing. This is a queer MM paranormal romance and it's friends to lovers. In this book, Vincent is suffering because vampires aren't really a welcome part of the community. They're really shunned and ostracized for the most part and they rely on the kindness of the people in their lives in order to be able to feed. But Vincent doesn't have anyone in his life and he can't afford black market blood so he's been breaking into people's homes in order to feed off them while they're sleeping. Victims are none the wiser and he is able to get himself fed but one of the people that he is feeding on starts to notice that he's got some bite marks on his neck and actually this is kind of convenient for him because while most people would be afraid, he actually needs the help of a vampire because he believes that there is a company that is responsible for the death of his mother and they need vampire subjects. So he wants to befriend this vampire and see if they can work together in order to break into this pharmaceutical company and get the evidence he needs to prove that they are responsible. This one is so sweet. The vampire Vincent just has this precious, precious place in my heart. He's so sweet and awkward and vampirism is used to talk about issues of consent and also about marginalized communities and I just I just love it. Next up I have another recent read which is Lord of Eternal Light by Ben Alderson. This is the first in a three book series. This is an MM Beauty and the Beast retelling with some vampire witchy elements. What's going on in this one? So the world here witches have had a curse on them and so they haven't been as powerful as they've been in the past but Jack comes along he's born with these prophetic powers. He is destined to break this curse. So what they do when he turns 18 is they send him in as a claim, which is basically a human sacrifice for this vampiric-like beast named Marius. Jack's plan is to woo Marius and when his power wanes on the last day that he will be with him, he's going to kill him, thus breaking the curse. But along the way, Jack finds out that maybe he hasn't been told the whole truth. This one is very sexy. I thought the ending was a little fast, but overall, it's just fun, sexy time. Next up, I have Moon Called by Patricia Briggs. This is a 13 book series and I believe it's ongoing. I think there might be more coming. So that's what we've got for now at the time that I'm filming this. This is about Mercy or Mercedes Thompson. She is a shape-shifting coyote mechanic. She ends up becoming involved in this mystery surrounding this young werewolf. Vince ends up drawing her into the local werewolf pack that she has been aware of but tried to steer clear of as much as possible. And it also brings her back into the orbit of her old flame and her old pack. So this has werewolves, vampires, it's got this whole system of different species that interact with each other. Mercy is a coyote shapeshifter, but it's primarily focused on the, the shapeshifters. This 
series has a special place in my heart because it does take place in Washington State where I live and it also has quite a few books so if you're looking to really dive into something this is a series to get into. Next up I have A Hunger Like No Other by Cressley Cole. This is like faded maids, it's got vampire, valkyrie, it's got all sorts of different species and this one is an enemies to lovers capture captive. So after enduring years of torture, Lachlan, oh super important detail that I missed, Lachlan is a werewolf and he was tortured by vampires for like hundreds of years. Okay, back to what I was saying. Has scented his mate and he finds out that it is a half vampire, half Valkyrie. That just ticks him off. And for Emma's part, she is trying to investigate the death of her parents and what's going on there really. And this is completely interrupted when she is then captured by her mate, forced to stay in his Scottish castle. This is another series that has a ton of books. I think there's like 18. So you can really go hard into this world if you want to. Next up, I have Queen Takes. Ooh, messing it up again. I'm about to say blood and I meant knights. Moving on. By Jolie Sue Burkhart. This is a six book series, but there's a lot of interconnected uh, short stories and novellas. This is a polyamorous vampire romance. So the premise of this is that our main gal, Shara, she's been on the run because there's a monster that killed her mother and it's now coming after her. So she's been on the run for years, just when she is about to give up hope because she thinks the monster's gonna get her this time. She got a little messy. She is approached by some men who claim to be her blood. They let her know that she is actually a vampire queen and they've actually been searching for her for a very long time. When she realizes that she is this vampire queen, this also comes with powers and a new political landscape that she needs to maneuver because she needs to get some control and figure out where her territory is going to be. This one is very spice forward. There's a lot of blood play with this one because it's vampires. So if you're not into that, big heads up there. But there's usually for each book one political thing that kind of happens and usually a couple people at least that get added to the group. It's a big group. Next up I have a four book series that starts with The Beautiful by Renee Audier. Now this is a little bit different than what I normally read because I like very spice heavy books and this is YA. It is more of a historical fantasy. It's got a forbidden romance. It's got vampires. We've got a love triangle element that starts to come into play. Getting some twilighty vibes, you know what I'm saying? This is taking place in 1872 New Orleans. Celine has just escaped Paris because she had a little incident. Something happened and she's on the run. So she's trying to restart her life. But there's a series of murders that have been happening in the area and she finds herself pulled into the investigation and pulled into the orbit of the enigmatic and very rich and very handsome Sebastian St. Germain. I will say uh, the second book takes a new moon type of direction. My Twilight girlies know what I'm talking about. A heads up with that. The first book though, it gave me like historical Twilight vibes. I just ate, I ate it up. I absolutely ate it up. All right, we had a mild interruption. Hopefully things don't look too different, but Next up, I have the Black Dagger Brotherhood series by J.R. Ward. And this is like vampire warriors, sort of like a faded maid urban fantasy. This whole series revolves around these elite vampire warriors, but they are tasked with protecting the vampire species from the lessening society who are these like uh, people that basically kind of like sell their souls and they become all white and smell like baby powder. And it's a, uh, it's very interesting concept, but each book follows a different warrior and them falling in love. And sometimes it's with humans and sometimes it's with fellow vampires and sometimes they have damage. There's all sorts of different elements at play. There is a vampire king and the first novel centers around him and him finding his mate. So one thing that I'll say about these books is that they are older and some of the references definitely show there's like references to like older style cell phones and wraparound sunglasses. So if you're in for a little bit of nostalgia, you're definitely gonna get it here. And it does take a little bit to get used to the writing style. It's a little bit like written like over the top, but once you get used to it, I ended up binging like four books in a row. And finally, this is a series that you may have already read. It was very, very popular a handful of years back, but it's one of my favorites. So I still want to say a little something about it. And that is The Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I have here, this looks like it's a novel. This is a companion guide that tells you about all the different people and species. So like this is a little bit about one of the characters. 
and the role that they play and some background on them. And there's lots of stuff that goes into this, but I'm just gonna hold this as like a representation of it. So this is forbidden love between a witch and a vampire. It's got like magical secret society sort of a feel. They're underground, there's magical artifacts, there's alchemy. In this world, different species are forbidden from interacting and there are primarily vampires, witches, and demons, or demons? I actually don't know if you, which way to pronounce it. But so this is centered around Diana Bishop, who is sort of a reluctant witch. She doesn't like to use her powers, but she's also a professor at Oxford University. She studies things around the imagery of alchemy and kind of related topics. So she one day, completely by happenstance, calling up this manuscript that all the different species have been trying to get their mitts on and they all feel it. They all know somehow that she's gotten a hold of it. So all of a sudden she is thrust into the forefront of all these different species suddenly who want to try and get their hands on this manuscript because they think it has like the origins of the species and each species kind of has like a different tale about what it actually is and this puts her in front of a vampire by the name of Matthew. He is a geneticist and he is this mysterious vampire. Remember we're not supposed to be interacting with other species here. It calls too much attention. They are forced to kind of confront things together. They end up working together. This is a three book series. It is very, very complex world. Like I said, this is the companion guide and it is basically a novel in itself. There's time travel in the second book. This was kind of like my adult version of Twilight. It was what got me back into reading after a very long break. It was kind of the first time that I think I really read Spice and realized that that could be part of my romances. Those are a bunch of paranormal series that you can can read to get in the mood for spooky season. Let me know what paranormal series that you've been into this spooky season or non-paranormal. I'm always down for a good recommendation. And don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more content from me. And I hope to see you on my next video. Bye-bye.